welcome and or welcome back to the channel my name is Sarah and today we're going to do a recent reads and this is going to be everything that I read during uh well, I already left it Summerween <laughs> oh my god it was so long ago this is everything I read in Summerween and a few extra books that I have read since then and this is going to be everything that is not an arc so these are things that I own or I read digitally uh, for the past month or so we will start the top of the list. I will go ahead and cover the big chunk of my reading. I read the first, first three. I read the uh, one through three in the Small Spaces Quartet by Catherine Arden. I am getting the fourth book um, on August 15th. It's coming out in paperback, so I wanted a complete paperback matching set. And I'm going to get that and read that as soon as it comes because the cliffhanger ending of Dark Waters is un unfair and I am hurt. <laughs> So Small Spaces, for those who don't know, is a middle grade horror series about a little girl named Ollie, her friend Brian, and her friend Coco as they encounter in ter terribly frightening things. In the first book, they meet the Smiling Man, and the Smiling Man makes a deal with a woman in their town, and Ollie, Brian, and Coco and their classmates are sent to this in-between world where the Smiling Man dwells with his scarecrows that only move when you're not looking at them at night, which is horrifying. They manage to get away from the Smiling Man, and the Smiling Man then follows them throughout the entire series. The scariest book for me so far has probably been Dead Voices. In this one, they are trapped on top of a mountain in a lodge, skiing lodge, as a snowstorm rages outside and the power goes out. This one has the whole, like, creepy kids thing, like, creepy ghost kids. Creepy ghost kids are my... Oh, I, I, I just can't with creepy ghost kids. I love being scared though. So it's also simultaneously my favorite thing. <laughs> in Dark Waters, they go out on a boat with uh, Ollie, not Ollie, crap, with Coco's mom, because she is doing a news article on a man who owns a boat and the mythical monster that's supposed to dwell in the lake there. His name is Champ, I believe. And while they're out on the water, they get marooned on an island that they don't think anyone knows where they are. No one seems to be able to see them for reasons. And it's got a giant snake and a ghost and stuff in the water and it's a lot. So, I really love these. So I had originally read Small Spaces before. I technically had read this twice before. So I reread it, annotated it, and tabbed it. As you can see here, I've done it for all, all three. My favorite thing about this series, and I do recommend this, is that the first book, you have a good chunk of time. Probably, actually, I turned right to it. Things don't get creepy till about right here in this book. So you've got some time to settle into the story, to meet our characters. Um, Coco, Brian, and Ollie aren't really good friends until they go through this event together and then they're bonded and it's like trauma bonded, I guess. And so you have time to start the story and get to know the characters. You don't have that kind of a delay in these. I read this one and it was like 20, 15, 20 pages and the spooks started. I read this one and it was less than 12 pages and the spooks started and I was like, Catherine Arden, she's just coming at us, just pow pow, just you're here for the horror have it. It was great. I highly recommend these. If you like middle grade, if you like horror, if you have a young reader who likes either one of those things, a thousand percent this. I also say all that. I am a chicken. <laughs> Again, I love being scared. I, 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 I am easily scared and I ate these up. If you're not easily scared, if you like, you know, you you enjoy horror and you're experienced at horror they're probably not going to scare you but for me i was reading especially especially dead voices i was reading this going huh oh and just giggling because that's my that's my fear reaction i laugh i giggle i giggle crazily it's a, it's something moving on <laughs> i also read witcher blood of elves finally got to this after i don't know how long of saying i will I really enjoyed this. This is the first full length novel in the Witcher series. And we follow mostly Siri. Geralt is there, but this book focuses on Siri growing up with Yennefer and Triss. If you have watched the show or played the video games, all of these characters are familiar. 
I, again, loved this. My one big fault for it is that there is a lot of name dropping, a lot of setup, and not a lot of time to absorb those. I have some familiarity with all of these characters because I've played three games at this point and watched the first season. So, like, I'm familiar with them, but it's been a hot minute. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time, especially when it's talking about the kings and queens, going, which one is that? Which... Oh, was it that one? And then, you know, back to the story. So really enjoyed. There is also the writing style itself is a little strange, uh, mostly because I think it's translated, but also I really enjoyed the way he would do large chunks of dialogue to fill in sort of events that are happening. So we would have almost like flashback scenes of Siri and Yennefer specifically having conversations, doing trading, and it is entirely dialogue with very little um, prose to explain what's going on. We just have to get it from context and it's just them back and forth. I really loved that style. Um, it's a very interesting style choice and it works really well for this. So if you like Witcher, I think you should give it a shot. It's set, it's based on a like Western medieval world. So a lot of the whole, you know, women need to be treated this way or that way or women do this and that, it's, it's in the book. I know a lot of people don't enjoy that. It's, it's just part of it. People, you know, it has its flaws. It's not perfect, but I, I love it. It's fantastic. It was really good. I am very excited to read the next one. Having read that one and found that I like the long, long format because I was worried it wouldn't be as good as the short story collection I read, I'm now sure it will be one that I enjoy. So I'm going to move forward with the series. Again, I have the, I think you can see them up here. I have all the nice hardbacks, so I want to get them read. That is all the physical books that I have. I also read The Moth Keeper. Two graphic novels that I read were The Moth Keeper and Garlic and the Witch. The Moth Keeper is Kay O'Neill's newest graphic novel. They wrote The Tea Dragon Society, which is my favorite graphic novel series of all time. And The Moth Keeper is very good. It's not as good as The Tea Dragon Society, but it was still really fantastic. It is the story of a young girl who decides she wants to be the Moth Keeper for her tribe. Her tribe is a nocturnal one. They dwell during the night to care for these moths that help sustain the landscape they live in, this desert landscape. And the daytime tribe, you know, they kind of reap the benefits but also do their own part to help the nighttime tribe. She decides to be the moth keeper for personal reasons, but also she wants to feel wanted and important and feel like she's pulling her weight because she was an orphan brought up and raised in this tribe. And this book kind of looks at that idea of what you think is expected of you, what is, what do you think you have to pay to be of worth, and the idea of loneliness because the moth keeper is a lonely job. You take the moths out at the beginning of the night and you walk for miles and then you bring them back at the end of the night and you're on your own. A very, very poignant story. For the first half of it, I honestly wasn't sure what I thought and then the end of it when everything started to come together was really, really good. And it was really impactful. And I really liked the message that Kay O'Neill was sending with it. I actually went out and bought it on digital for a friend of mine and sent it to him because I thought he would enjoy it. So Moth Keeper is great. Not as good as Tea Dragon Society, but still very, very good. And the other graphic novel that I mentioned is Garlic and the Witch. And this is the sequel to Garlic and the Vampire. I love Garlic and the Vampire, but Garlic and the Witch is even better. <laughs> In Garlic and the Witch, we find out how garlic came to be. In this world, we're following garlic and the other vegetables of the witch's garden. And in the first book, garlic is sent to investigate the vampire that's now living in this ruined, abandoned castle up in the woods. And in this book, she is changing. Things are changing and she is growing and she doesn't understand why. And we find out where garlic and her friends came from. We find out that the witch that created them, their type of mother figure, we find out where she came from. And we see what their lives are going to look like. And it's about garlic dealing with that change and that um, alteration to what they thought their life was going to be like. And oh my gosh, it was so cute. I loved this so much. This was one of the best books of the month for me. <laughs> it's such a short, sweet graphic novel and I, I loved so much about it. This is a graphic novel series that you are interested in and you haven't read. I definitely recommend it especially if you're someone who loves middle grade 
or fantasy graphic novels in any way shape or form I am going to seek these out to buy for my shelves it's something that I think I could read with my daughter in a couple of years and she will enjoy so highly recommend Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch fantastic little stories and the final two books were also another part of a series I'm doing good on series this month I read the second and third books in the lost it there it is necessary evil series so that is psycho and moonstruck okay first off let me say i read the first necessary evils book last year at this point maybe beginning of the year i wasn't sold on it adam and noah are fine uh it was just a strange dynamic it was just uh, it didn't sell me didn't sell me off the bat however i needed a thriller uh book and I don't read those so I talked to Robin at Paperback and Planners and I said is, is, is there some thriller elements in this one can I read it she said sure 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 I would think so because she loves the series so I picked up Psycho and I loved this this was really good <laughs> this one follows um let me think Lucas and hold on yes it was August and Lucas I almost said Andrew but that's not right August and Lucas and August is a professor at a college and Lucas is a former disgraced son kind of FBI agent who has a psychic ability to be able to touch someone or something and pick up you know trace history of it there's a word for that and I don't remember what it is regardless the two meet and right off the bat Lucas figures out who what August does for funsies <laughs> and their relationship starts quick and fast now the reason I loved this was because August is a dang cinnamon roll that man is just so blindly sweet it was so good I don't know why this one's called psycho because none of these characters seem psycho except for the bad guy he was he was um he was a lot I hated him I'm glad he's dead that's just all I have to say about that one so psycho I really enjoyed Moonstruck which is the third one it's Robin's favorite and so far it's mine is fantastic for the reason that we meet Jericho and Jericho's boys I love Jericho and Jericho's boys the Mulvaney brother that this follows is Atticus so Atticus and Jericho meet on the job Atticus is going to take care of a gentleman who is I think he was trafficking young girls or something like that and he finds Lucas already there not Lucas he finds Jericho already there doing the job so he just hangs out and they meet and they have a connection and it goes from there my favorite thing about this particular volume is just the meat of the story in this there is you know there is the romance there is the steamy scenes but the story itself had a lot of meat to it we're not only learning about Jericho and the boys but we are also finding out what happened to Jericho's sister and that's unraveling a bigger uh plot of this group that's victimizing the homeless population or the impoverished population where Jericho and his crew lives and works and I just really loved that plot it was there was a lot of a lot involved in that and it just really worked great for me the next one that I have to read I will have to look is Headcase and Madman I think those two are the twins so I'll probably read those two back to back as well the only problem with these is she has taken them out of KU so I have to purchase them which means after reading Moonstruck I might end up just buying physical copies of them to read I don't know if I'll get to them next month I really want to but we'll see and the twins I think one of the twins ends up with Jericho's brother Felix if not I'll be upset <laughs> because those two were so funny in Moonstruck I want them together so bad so we'll see what happens but that is it for my recent reads that are not arcs I am currently reading uh, Raven Song by TJ Klune which came out today I have a Met Gala arc so the review will be just a hair bit late I'm also working on the stars undying and there was something else I just finished a beanie song but I'll cover that in my next arc wrap-up video oh Griffin in light by Mercedes Lackey those are my next arc reads as far as not arcs I haven't got anything going at the moment um, so we'll see what I get to reading I have a few indie books that I think I'm gonna try I'm trying the sample right now for I think it's called heliotrope 
writing style is not my favorite, but I'm very intrigued with where the story's going. So we'll see what happens. I will have another one of these, hopefully very soon. I'm going to try and keep them separated. Arcs and, you know, already released books, that sort of thing. Again, we'll see. But that is it for this kind of catch up recent reads video. And I will talk to you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.